60 minutes, rewind. By now, the story is familiar, but no less heartbreaking. On Valentine's Day, a former student walked into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High in Parkland, Florida, pulled an AR-15 out of his duffel bag, and began shooting. Students hid in closets and played dead. When it was over, 17 people were killed, 14 of them students. In the hours that followed, there were vigils and a string of lawmakers offered their thoughts and prayers. Then something different happened. The students of Stoneman Douglas gathered in living rooms and in front of cameras, declaring never again. In less than a month, the teens did what few thought possible. They changed gun laws in Florida and ignited a national movement. We wondered how a generation with a notoriously short attention span plans to hold the nation's attention. You'll hear from them later. But we begin with another classmate who hasn't been seen or heard from since the shooting. This is Anthony Borges. He is 15 years old and should be at soccer practice. But when we met him on Tuesday, he was struggling to breathe. He'd just come off a ventilator the day before. Anthony's father, Roger, told us his son has had eight surgeries already. Another is being scheduled. He was shot five times just outside his classroom at Stoneman Douglas High. He was face to face with the shooter? Yeah. He got in shot on the leg and he tried to, you know, keep him going with the, with the door. Uh -huh. He, he tried to shut the door? Yeah. In that moment, he received another one on the back. The Borges family is from Venezuela. Roger wanted the world to see what happened to his son. He called you, right? Yeah, he called me in the right moment when he get, he laid down on the floor. Yeah, and he told me like, um, that I, I got child. And I said, just keep talking to me. Okay, don't go, don't leave, don't leave me. Keep it talking to me. And where was he shot? Right here. Right here. One bullet shattered his thigh bone. Another damaged his lung and liver. That's a miracle for me. This is a miracle that he's still alive? Yeah. He's not number 18? No. No. Roger, a handyman, is now praying for another miracle, help paying his son's medical bills. Stories like Anthony's unfold quietly in hospitals after every mass shooting. Shame, shame. But what shame, happened in Parkland shame, is different. Shame, shame. Instead shame, of retreating shame, into their shame, gated neighborhoods shame, and asking for shame, privacy shame. or saying it was too soon to talk about guns. We're about to go national. All of this is about to be everywhere. Parkland decided it was exactly the right moment to talk about guns. Unless we act now. It was the students who stepped forward first and said, never again. You've probably heard a lot from them over the last month, but we were surprised about what they had to say about the fate of the gunman. Um, Florida prosecutor announced today that he's going to seek the death penalty against um, Nicholas Cruz. And I just want to get your thoughts on that, uh, Emma. Good. Good why? Good that he's seeking the death penalty for Nick Cruz. I, I don't want to think about Nick Cruz. I think the more we think about him, the more he wins. That being said, I, I, in a way, I disagree with Emma. Let him rot forever. Let him rot in jail. I want to see him rot forever, as Cameron just said. But when we pursue the death penalty, this will be kept in the media for much longer. I just don't want him to get what he wants. I want him to suffer no matter what. The death of one person, as terrible of a person as he is, cannot outweigh the death of the 17. Alex Wind, a self-described theater geek, Jacqueline Corrin, the junior class president, Student reporter David Hogg and senior Emma Gonzalez started what they call the Never Again movement in Cameron Kasky's living room. I need to call the Washington Post because I was supposed Hello. to this last night. In the hours after the attack, filled with grief but fueled with anger and armed with their phones, the teenagers got to work. First, they set off a firestorm of tweets, many aimed at lawmakers. They said yes to almost every interview request and used social media to organize a student-led protest at the state capitol. This is about hope. This is about moving forward with everybody. 
In three weeks, they'd convinced Florida's Republican governor, Rick Scott, to defy the National Rifle Association, something that hasn't happened in Florida in 20 years. The new Florida law raises the age to buy a rifle to 21. Uh, it introduces a three-day waiting period on gun sales, and it makes more money available for mental health services. Give us a grade on what's been accomplished. C? I was going to say C minus. Yes. Yeah. We can't praise them for doing what they've done because that wouldn't have stopped what happened at our school. That being said, the Florida bill is much more impressive than that embarrassing Stop School Violence Act that they're pushing in D.C., which is just a bunch of hot air fluff, doesn't use the word gun once when all these tragedies, there's, uh, the, again, the one thing that has linked them together is the gun. On Saturday, they're hoping a half million people will join them to march in Washington. They want Congress to ban military-style rifles like this, along with the kind of high-capacity magazines that were used in Las Vegas and at Sandy Hook. I know I can't help but think. I think Sandy Hook happened. Those parents made it their life's mission to try to get some real change. What makes you think that you guys could do more, that you this could be different? The thing about it is that we are the generation that's had to be trapped in closets, waiting for police to come or waiting for a shooter to walk into our door. We are the people that know what it's like firsthand. We're the mass shooting generation. That's, I, I was born- We're the mass shooting generation. I was born months after Columbine. I'm 17 years old and we've had 17 years of mass shootings. Raise your hand if there are guns in your house. I feel safe because my father has a gun in the house that he can use to protect our family. And my family lives on the principle that there are some guns that are made to protect your family from anyone who might come in and try to hurt them. And there are some, some guns that are made for war. We need to pay attention to the fact that this isn't just a mental health issue. He wouldn't have harmed that many students with a knife. Three days after the shooting, Emma Gonzalez accepted an invitation to speak at a rally. The five foot two, 18 year old had to stand on boxes to be heard. We call BS. Her speech was seen millions of times and ignited the passion of students around the country. That us kids don't know what we're talking about, that we're too young to understand how the government works. We call BS. She now has more than a million Twitter followers, 10 times more than Florida's governor. So why was it you? Why do you think you broke through? It might have been my hair. Very honestly, oh, it come on. just might have been my hair. I don't think it was the hair. I think it was a little, a little bit the hair. Like, you know, just iconically, you think of the picture and you think of a bald girl. What do you think about this idea of arming teachers? It's stupid. Why? First of all, they have, Douglas ran out of paper for like two weeks in the school year. And now all of a sudden they have $400 million to pay for teachers to get trained to arm themselves? Really? Really? If you're a teacher and you have a gun, do you keep it in a lockbox or do you carry it on your person? If the teacher dies and a student who's a good student is able to get the gun, are they now held responsible to shoot the student who's come into the door? I'm not happy with that. Where's the one with the Emma's mother, Beth, watched as her daughter became one of the most recognizable faces in one of the most polarizing debates in the country. I'm terrified. It's like she built herself a pair of wings out of balsa wood and duct tape and jumped off a building. Mm. And we're just like running along beneath her with a net, mm. which uh, she doesn't want or think that she needs. What is happening to her life? It's insane. Somebody said, um, you know, please tell Emma we're behind her, mm -hmm. which I appreciate, mm -hmm. but we should have been in front of her. I should have been in front of her. We all adults, we should have dealt with this 20 years ago. It's a lot to ask of these kids. Well, they're asking it of themselves, mm -hmm. but some adults are like, you go girl, you changed the law, you know? And I'm like, well, what are we doing? The story will continue after this.
The Douglas students inspired a walkout at nearly 3,000 schools for 17 minutes this past Wednesday. One minute for every life lost in Parkland. This is what we call the war room. It's the conference room. Oh, they allowed us into their newly donated headquarters. We agreed not to reveal the location. Why are we being secretive? People have sent us a lot of death threats, and I, for one, am paranoid about a bomb being thrown in the window. And the fact that I'm getting death threats, Emma's getting death threats, Cameron's getting death threats, it shows the polarized state that America's in. The victims are being represented by people that could have been the victim. All right? Yeah. When I feel down, I come here and, you know, I just feel him. Manuel and Patricia Oliver's son was murdered in the shooting. Joaquin was 17 years old and considered one of the most well-liked kids in school. Oliver still coaches Joaquin's basketball team. He knows these kids. What is it that these kids can do that adults haven't been able to do in the past? These kids have their cell phones on their hands whole day. And, and we as parents, we criticize that a lot because we ignore the power of that. The difference between this tragedy and others, if you ask me, is that this generation is um, used to get answers right away. You think they're going to wait for six months or a year for anybody in Congress or any, anybody that needs to make the right call? They're hardwired to do that. Absolutely, thing. right away. The students have already received more than $3 million in donations, most of it from Hollywood. You guys have gotten checks from big names, George Clooney, Oprah Winfrey, your Michael Bloomberg's gun control group is helping you, the Women's March people are helping you. How do you make sure those people aren't using you for their specific agendas? Well, we don't let them. You see, that's the thing. We all remember everybody has an agenda. And these are people with decades of experience. Exactly. Are they giving you guidance? I can't get a hotel room on my own. I'm 17 years old. Of course, we have people helping us with that. I can't get the city permits for 10 blocks of down Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. We allow them to help where they can, but we make sure that we are calling the shots. And anybody who tries to call a shot for us, we respectfully say, that's not what this is about. Have you had to do that? Have you seen people trying to push back on you guys? Politicians have asked us to endorse. Endorse, endorse them. Nope. You can support us all you want, but if you think you can get your hands on our movement, it's just not going to happen. Have you turned people away who have offered money? Yes. And why have you turned them away? Because they said, here's some money if you do this. The second we get an if, sorry, it's gone. During our interview, Alex had to leave early for a theater performance, Cameron for a family dinner. They are trying to live their teenage lives and protect them. Did you ever think, I don't want to get into this. This is a nasty fight that I don't want to be in the middle of. I mean, I have no choice. But you do. You don't, don't have to. I know. Why? I have no choice because there were, there were CNN cameras there. My speech was broadcast all over the country in like four seconds, and I had no idea they were gonna be there. And that's not, like, I'm not upset at that. I'm just like, <sighs> never gonna be the same person ever again. You think you'll be able to go back to your life? I hope so, I don't know. <laughs> Feels like it's been a year. It does, really it's does. been a month. It's been less than a month.